Welcome to the Cabrera Lab podcast. Hey. Hey. How you doing? I'm doing great. I'm really excited for today. We are going to be talking only about one thing. Oh. Distinctions. Nice. Identity other distinctions. That's the only uh, kind there is. I know. And I really, um, I think it would be really good for us to provide a more in-depth discussion of just one of these patterns of thinking. Yeah. So one of the four one DSR four. and P distinctions, systems, relationships, and perspectives. But you're saying we're just going to talk about distinctions. I know. I just want to talk about that because I think it'll be really useful for people to understand distinctions at a slightly deeper level. Cool. So How are we going to do ones on? We will. We'll S do one. Of, you know also? what? We will. We'll do a set. Okay. One of D, one of S, one of R. So we'll call them deep dive. Okay. Deep dive into distinctions. So let's start with what we know. What we know about distinctions. Yes. And I know when you and I first started all of this, we we were looking to find evidence of existence and effectiveness. Mm -hmm. So let's talk a little bit more about how we started with that. DSRP is a the is a is a is a uh, mathematical formula, mm -hmm. and it makes certain predictions. And so we wanted to see whether those predictions are, you know, have an empirical basis. Yes. And um, one of the predictions it makes is about distinctions, and it says a bunch of different things about distinctions. But one of the things it says is that it's that they're universal, that that uh, the mind of all people. Mm -hmm. are constantly making distinctions, but also that nature itself, meaning reality, is also making distinctions. And whether or not your mind is making the same distinctions that nature is kind of the, that's the, the point, is the more right. aware you are of your distinction making, the more aware you can be of, oh, am I making the same distinctions that are occurring in reality, or am I making slightly different ones? Right. But when you say universal, you mean... Everybody all the time Everybody is making the distinctions time. Yep. when they're doing anything. I'm choosing between coffee and tea. I'm, you know, yeah. differentiating my five children named George, whatever it is. <laughs> it's George Foreman's kids. We're, yeah. we're always making distinctions. Always. And not just, not just, uh, we're not just talking about conceptually in the mind. You are making distinctions when you're making concepts or ideas. But you're making distinctions when you're touching things. You're making distinctions when you're tasting things. Your tongue, mm -hmm. your taste buds are making distinctions. You're distinguishing when you're hearing things, when you're seeing things. You're distinguishing between one thing and an other. Yeah. And so the basic structure of a distinction is identity, the thing, and the other or the not thing. Right. And so we can think of a distinction as being not a thing, but actually kind of like a a fence between mm -hmm. two things. Like a boundary. A boundary a between, yeah. a line between two things. So when we make a distinction, what we're doing is sort of saying, this is something. And when we call that something out, we're by definition creating a not thing, even if we're not aware of it. Yeah. And we often are not aware of it. Right. So a lot of these things that I've just mentioned are all predictions that DSRP would make about distinctions, that there's an identity component, that there's an other component, right. that people are doing it all the time, that nature's doing it all the time. Yes. Um, and a bunch of other stuff. And that the, that the other is also an identity. Yes. Okay. So things like that. So, so those are all predictions that the theory makes. And we wanted to test whether or not those things turned out to be um valid or true. So just to slow it down a little bit so that we're, you know, for the audience, mm -hmm. when when you say um, there's an identity and there's another, mm -hmm. so, and and there's, you know, the thing and the not thing, just mm -hmm. to give a very simple example, there's Laura yep. and there's not Laura. I'm not Laura. Which is you yep. and this water bottle and this computer and the sun. Everything that isn't me yes. is all not Laura. Yes. And what? also, when I said the, I, the other is also an identity, yes. you can think of me as not Laura, but, and that would be one way to 
right. conceptualize me. Mm -hmm. I am not Laura, right? Yeah. But you can also realize that I am not simply defined by Laura, mm -hmm. by not being Laura. I'm also defined as Derek. Which is your identity. Which is that's my, that's your, the identity yeah, side of, of me. Not Laura is the other side of me. And everything in the universe has this right. structure to it. And everything in your mind has this structure to it. And it provides almost like the breathing of cognition. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's how pervasive distinction making is. You right. cannot think of anything or about anything without distinction. Yes. You're always making distinctions whether you like it or not. Okay, so then how do we know, or what What do we, give some examples of how we know they exist in nature, for example. Yeah, so f there's many, 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 many studies that show that distinctions exist across the various disciplines, and we've done, we're not gonna mention all of them because there's hundreds of them. Um, They're available. But whether it's, you know, physics, chemistry, biology, psychology, sociology, astronomy, you know, economics, business policy, mm -hmm. basket weaving, you know, it doesn't really matter skateboarding, you know, mm -hmm. whatever discipline or subdiscipline you're in um, and whatever phenomena of nature that discipline or subdiscipline is studying, mm -hmm. there are distinctions. Yes. And so as as a few examples we can give you. Yeah. One is um uh you know fetuses in the womb mm -hmm. are actually making distinctions. So this is pre language, pre you know pre birth. Yeah. We are making distinctions and we know this because studies have shown that babies actually have familiarity with their mother's voice, for example, because they've heard it in the womb. Yes. They have familiarity with the poems or songs that a mother or father sang to them in, in utero, utero. Yeah. right? Hmm. So they're aware of those things from, from being in the womb. So yes. they're making a distinction between a song that they know and yeah. a song they don't know right? that they heard in the womb. Right, which gets back to what you were saying, which is we make distinctions of all five of our senses. All five of our senses. So you're saying there's a the auditory, mm -hmm. you know, you're making distinctions based on what you hear. Yes. Um, and then there's also obviously distinctions you touch and see and things Absolutely. like that. Absolutely. It also reminds me of, you know... Um, can't remember if it's penguins. Yes. Is it penguins? Penguins, yeah. yeah. Penguins, I think we saw this documentary about there's penguins and there's like th thousands and thousands of penguins. Yes. Penguin <laughs> colony, 40,000 penguins. Yeah. And roughly 15,000 of those are juvenile penguins. Yeah. And they actually can, the parents and the juveniles can, can distinguish essentially their voices, mm -hmm. the voices of the penguin, the pitch and everything. Yeah. Um, in a sea of penguin voices. A big sea. A big yeah. sea. 40,000 of them are doing penguin yeah. squawkings or whatever. Yeah. And they're able to tell which one is theirs and go find them and, you know, call them in and regroup with each other. Yeah. So yeah. penguins are making distinctions, you know, these are just a few of examples. many, many, yeah. many examples of distinction making happening across yeah. nature. Yeah. Yeah. We could write a lot. I mean, there's, yeah, there's so, just many a, examples. so many examples. How do we know then? Okay. So, so you said mind and nature. So you're, you're saying we know they're in, in nature, obviously. Mm -hmm. How, how do you, how do we test that it's in the mind? How do we know that it's in our minds? Yeah, so there's a number of studies that we've done where we try to we're, we're testing a number of different things. So first, we're testing are people making distinctions mm -hmm. uh, without them being prompted to do so necessarily. Second, we're we're assessing whether or not when they make distinctions, are they making distinctions of this structure of identity other, right? Right. And uh, again, without them knowing that they're doing it, without without being prompted to pay attention to those structures, are yeah. they naturally 
cognitively building distinctions with these structures. Okay, so let's give an example. Yeah. So one of the things that we did was called, it's the world famous dog tree burger <laughs> study. Yes. Basically, there was an image of a dog and a tree and a burger. A hamburger. Hamburger. Yeah, a cheeseburger. People were asked to check off which of the labels applied to each one. So there was yes. dog, not dog. Yeah, uh, dog, burger, tree, yeah. and then not dog, not burger, not tree. Yes. They check right. which ones are which. And it shows that that people understand, mm -hmm. you know, without any kind of prompting that, that you know, you can call a tree uh, a tree. Mm -hmm. That one seems obvious. Yep. But you can also call it a not dog and a not burger. Right. 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 And, and vice versa for the other ones. Right. And so what those results showed statistically and mathematically is that people can, they can and they do make they see an identity and they can see the other. Yes. Right? Yeah. And so that was the first piece of what we did. Yeah, and that might seem kind of a little esoteric, yeah. but what you have to recognize about these distinctions is the way that we're defining things, what we're defining. Mm -hmm. And that goes for no matter what you're trying to define, you could be trying to define your customer. Yeah. What is and is not your customer. You could be defining your vision. What is and is not your vision. Mm -hmm. You could be defining a goal, a yeah. task. What what's what's involved in the task and what is not involved That's in right. the task. That's right. So the you know what sounds some somewhat theoretical, like distinctions are made up of identity and other, is really just a an overarching universal structure for every single time you define anything and everything. Mm -hmm you are performing this cognitive act. You are performing this structure. Yes. yes. And oftentimes, we don't know that we're doing that. That's the important part. And when I say often, I mean A like <laughs> most of the time, most yeah. people are not aware of the underlying structure of what they're doing all the time. Yes. When they're defining completely unimportant things and when they're defining completely important things. Yes. That's it doesn't right. matter. It, like, there's no distinction, ironically, between, you know, silly things that are kind of irrelevant. You're still distinguishing yeah. with that structure. And then the most important things in your life that you're distinguishing. Serious. Your goals. What, yeah. what your marriage is constituted Well, of, even just, you know, like, who you are. Who you are. Like, you know, that's who your friends yeah, are, that's, you know, what job you're going to do in life. You know, all of those things are are requiring this identity other distinction making. Yes. OK, so then so then we saw that people can and do make identity. Then yep. we wanted to test or or see um, where they might have difficulty with the other, the yes. concept of the other. So yes. we did, if you remember, the the orange polyhedra. Yep. And let Which me just like a cube. There was an image of a of an orange cube on, on a white background. On a yep. white background. And people were asked to click on the cube. The cube. Yep. Or the white space. Yep. Or not the cube. Or not the white space. Yes. And um, so we what we see is kind of a heat map of their yes, clicks. That's right. right. In, the, in a statistical heat map of mm -hmm. their clicks. Mm -hmm. And what what we we're able to learn about this is, first of all, like you might expect, people have a very easy time clicking on the cube when asked to click yes. on the cube, right? Yes. Um, they have a, a very easy time clicking on the white space. Yes. When they're asked to click on the white space. Yes. Right? They have a slightly more difficult time clicking on the not cube yep. and the not white space. They had the hardest time clicking on the on the not cube. So on the not white space, their numbers were, you know, slightly lower. Right. But on the not object, it went down to 50 percent of yes. people who could actually click it. What's happening there is anytime it's object oriented, mm -hmm. click on the cube is an object. Yeah. Click, click on the not white space is an object. Yes. Right? Because yes. you're clicking on the cube. That's right. the only other thing that you can click on. Right. So in those two cases, the the click 
map was much more concentrated. Yes. Right? Yes. When asked to click on the white space, the other, yeah. or the not white space, I mean, or I'm sorry, the not cube, yes. which is the white space. Yeah, that you was get, the hardest. Uh, those are the hardest, but still you had great success in, in, uh, in, in all four conditions. In the not object, it actually went down 30%. 30%, yeah. What you're saying is we are very object oriented in our thinking. Yes. So it's easier to recognize an other, an other, if it's an object. Yes. But if it's not an object and it's the other, yeah. we struggle more with that. For sure. So, for example, if we're asked to find Waldo, yeah, pretty easy. Where's Waldo? If we're asked to point to the goat, pretty easy to point to a goat because right. it's a it's an object. Mm -hmm. But if we're asked to point to customer value, <laughs> that's not an object oriented concept or distinction. Mm -hmm. So, the the distinction is going to be much grayer. Yes. In your teams, for example. Yes. When you're dealing with things that are not kind of object oriented. In science, we call that construct validity, right? Yeah. That, that, you know, it's very easy for us to all point to a goat or point to a book. Yeah. Because they're objects. Yeah. But much more difficult to say, what is empathy? What is customer value? What is, you know, some of these mm -hmm. more complex ideas? Um, they certainly exist, right? Yeah. But they're much harder to find the edge yeah. that defines Fuzzy. them, right? It's much yeah. fuzzier. Yeah. And this research sort of showed that yeah. in very clear terms. Okay, there's one other one that I think we should talk about, which is yeah. the Rorschach. Oh, yeah. Uh, we had a, a funny ink blot yep. uh, shape, yep. and we asked people to... Just do what it. they do. Yeah, the Rorschach yeah. is a kind of a classic psychological test where... It's an ambiguous, uh, symmetrical image. Yeah. Uh, and people sort of put their mind's eye on the image. So you yeah. might be thinking about something and that influences what you see. Also, the image has a symmetrical nature to it. So it, you could see people or you could see clouds or you could see animals, animals or objects, or objects yeah. and all kinds of things. Um, and what people did was really interesting because yeah. what what we what we found is that there was tremendous diversity in what people saw. Yes. Right? So if you at look the at the individual level. At yeah. the individual level, there was tremendous diversity, meaning people saw all kinds of difference, different mm -hmm. things. Yeah. Right? So they distinguished the same thing very very differently. Yes. If you look kind of statistically across all of those individual answers, yeah. what you see is a pattern that they see the same categories of things, the same groupings of things, mm -hmm. right? And so what that tells us is that while people can, can make dramatically different and diverse distinctions when seeing the same object, yeah. they also do so very similarly. In the collective. In the collective. Yeah. Because because I think we had in that in that sample we had three hundred and seventy five people. Mm -hmm. I think if I remember correctly, we had hundreds of different distinctions at the individual level. Yeah. But then they all categorized up or grouped into uh, a person, an animal, a thing, or something else. Yeah. Right. And 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 they were kind of equally distributed among the top three. Yes. Which is interesting. That's Things like two people or yes. two, yes. you know, frogs or something like that. So in other words, we all make different distinctions at the individual level, but collective we have the same sort of categorical groupings yeah. across us, yeah. which is interesting. Yeah. So mind, nature, and then I guess you were talking a lot about predictions. Mm -hmm. um, and I guess one of the things that seems uh necessary to say or obvious in some ways is that when you have an identity you have another you have another and vice versa and vice versa so other means there's an identity identity means there are other what are the problems with identity other 
Well, so Where do we fall short? So it's pretty important. I mean, not to, I don't want to skip over the prediction part of things because yeah. because it's very important to understand that when you have an identity, whether you like it or not, and whether you see it or not, whether you're aware of it or not, there's another, mm-hmm. right? You can't have an identity without another, and you, and vice versa, right? And um, and also the prediction that when there's an other, the other is an identity and the identity is an other, which is yes. what we said earlier. Yes. Those are all predictions that turn out to be valid. True. Yeah. And the reason that's important is because those represent things that we don't see. So think of it this way. Imagine if you didn't know that for every valley, there was a mountain. For every valley yeah. system, there was a ridge. Yeah. Right. But. The truth is that, you know, where there's a ridge, there's a valley, and where there's valleys, there's ridges, and yeah. there these things tend to come together. They coexist. They coexist, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, you can imagine there's no in-breath without an out-breath, right? There's, mm-hmm. I mean, except maybe the last one or something like that. But <laughs> it's sad. <laughs> it's kind of sad. But, well, even that one, you'd have an out-breath, I guess. Yeah, uh, there's no in-breath. Yeah. So, um, the idea is that when when you have an identity, there's always an other. There's always an other. Mm-hmm. And a lot of times that other is something that we're marginalizing, something that we're ignoring. Sometimes in, in systems thinking, we call those others externalities. Yes. Right? We create things that are kind of in our mind external to the system. Mm-hmm. even though they're not actually external to the system, but we right. make them external to right. the system. So as a result of them being externalities, we don't consider them. And then when things don't work out the way we planned, we go, wait a minute, what happened? And we don't ever consider those externalities as part of the equation because we made them an other from the get-go. Right. So this... Whether it's marginalization, whether it's, you know, uh, externalities, those kinds of things, we're constantly doing this. Downstream, that's hugely problematic. So, sure. you know, if the other is a whole group of people, sure. for example, yeah, that's a problem. Yes. If, if you're not seeing or if you're purposely marginalizing them because you're claiming the identity, yes, then that has a lot of downstream effects. That's right. So let's go back to the, the research on... Our strengths and our weaknesses in distinction making. Well, the, in very simple terms, we see the identity way more than we see the other. Yeah. So we're biased towards the in, in distinction making. Every distinction has an identity and other. Yeah. But most of the time, we see the identity but not the other. Yes. Right. Yeah. So there's this massive bias towards the identity and away from the other. Mm-hmm. Well, that's a bias, and mm-hmm. that's a bias that's that's coming into play all the time because we're making distinctions all the time, right? Yes. So just being aware that wherever there's an identity, there's another will help you to, to just do like a quick check and test your distinctions, challenge your distinctions, right? Right. Make sure that you're not creating externalities. Make sure that you're that you're not marginalizing other ideas. Make sure, for example, that you're not creating echo chambers. Right. An echo chamber is a form of identity bias. Right. Because what you're doing is you're saying these are the messages that I agree with and these are the messages that I disagree with. These are the not messages. Mm -hmm. And (laughs) and I'm only going to like things that are part of the message. Well, over very short order. Yeah. You only get that message. And then you start to believe that this other message doesn't exist. Yeah. Because it's not part of your world. Yes. Right? Yes. You're not hearing it. You're not seeing it out of sight, out of mind. Yeah. It doesn't exist. So you believe this is all of reality. So then you start right. to believe this echo chamber yeah. is reality. Yeah. And that's very dangerous. And you're not challenging that that at all. You're, you you're don't even, even think to challenge it anymore because yeah. you don't even see the other as a variable. Yeah. So what DIO or distinctions identity other DO, mm-hmm. um, what that does for you is it tells you, hey, whenever you have this identity variable, you have this other variable. Yeah. Quite literally, this yeah. other variable, 
And you should pay attention at least for a millisecond to the possibility that that other variable is important. Yes, and, and just, just as a side note, we did research on 35,000 people. Yes. And we wanted to see what their, um, their thinking process yes, was, their right. thought process was. And interestingly, of the 35,000 people, the one thing that almost half of the people did, well, first yeah. of all, half of the people got stuck. Yeah. They didn't even know what to do. Yeah. So one way to think about this is is because 35,000 is like a big number, you know, or whatever. It's a, lot. it's a lot. But imagine having 10 people that work for you. Yeah. And imagine that you ask those 10 people to work on a problem that you're having at work or wherever. Mm -hmm. And what this research showed is what those 10 people, your team of 10 people, will tend to do and tend not to do. Yes. So like you said, the out of those 10 people, five of them get stuck immediately. We they're just they're just moments. completely stuck. <laughs> yeah. They don't know really how to think about the problem that you've given them. Yeah. They're just kind of stumped. They're stumped. Yeah. Five of them immediately start calling out some identities, making some identities. Mm -hmm. None of the 10 challenge the identities that they make. Meaning the identity is identity. They don't consider that there's anything other. They don't consider that there's anything other, other than, than the identities. identities that they came up with. Right. Mm -hmm. So right off the bat, what that means is you're pretty locked in mm -hmm. to your initial starting condition. Yes. Right? Yes. Where the five people are stuck, the other five people are working on the problem, and their initial starting, the things that they lay down at the beginning, probably aren't going to get challenged. Yes. And yet... There could be a ton of assumptions there. Yes. In those initial, what's initially laid down as thought. Right. Those starting assumptions could thwart your whole effort. Downstream. Because nobody's checking them. Nobody's challenging them. So I often say, you know, put your, put your ideas on the table mm -hmm. and just whack them with a stick, you yeah. know, and that identity other helps you hit it with a stick. So does yeah. the rest of DSRP. But, yeah. you know, kind of hit it with a stick. See if they break. Yeah. If they're, are they made of fine china or glass and they just crack, then then you know, you know, I'm saying that metaphorically, hit yeah. it with a stick. You're, you know, challenge your initial ideas especially yeah. because the rest of your thinking is going to be based on those initial ideas that you lay down. Right. And the simplest example of what you're talking about is, I don't know how many times you have a team working on something mm -hmm. and you invest a lot of time and money and energy and you get to the first result and you realize at that moment that you all were thinking about something different. Yes. Like you all thought the project was something different. So you didn't check the distinction that you were making about what the project actually was. That's so right. everybody proceeded down a path with a different identity of what that project was or yep. wasn't. You invested time and money. And then the downstream right. effect is you've totally missed each other because you didn't start from the beginning. With yeah, you might not have even agreed on the what right. all the terms, all the identities meant. So right. then not only do you have untested identities, you have different people thinking those identities are different things. Yeah. And so one way to think about this is, Take the, the words that people use. Well, in any group of people, they could be using the same words and think different things. Absolutely. Or they could be using different words and think the same things, mm -hmm. in which case you have a miscommunication also. Yeah. Or you could be using the same words for the same things. And that's where you want to get at is that, like, are we actually using the same terminology yeah. to describe the same mental models or the same distinctions? Right. Do we mean what we mean? Are we drawing the line in the same place? Yeah, we're, we're thinking the same thing relative to language. Yeah. So, so, you know, when I say Project X and you say Project X, we're thinking the same we're thing. We're thinking the same thing. The same right. uh, distinction we're making. Yeah, or customer value or yeah. we, whatever it is. Uh, but, or, or you know, a few years ago, I don't know, there was that thing on the internet about the, is this dress blue? Oh, like, yeah. Do we, 
when you see blue and when I see blue, are we talking, we use the word blue, but are yeah. we talking about the same blue? Right. Right. Or is, is, are you talking about kind of a greenish blue and I'm talking about kind of a, a bluish blue or something? See, even like now that. I know the exact blue I'm thinking of. Right. Exactly. <laughs> Um, interesting. Okay, so the last thing I think that maybe we should expand on a little bit is the idea of predictions. You were saying that, you know, there are predictions relative to not just DSRP, but distinctions. Mm -hmm. um, you were talking about the patterns, the elements, the interdependencies. Yeah, so we can predict that every identity is going to have another. Yes. We can predict that every other is going to have an identity. And we can predict that every other is an identity. And that every identity is another. Those are all predictions we can make based on simply DIO, distinctions, identity, other. Yeah. And that's important because it gives us new variables to think about. Right? Mm -hmm. If I think about something as an other, yeah. meaning it's the, the, the not customer, mm -hmm. let's say, then... That's very different than thinking about that not customer as an identity in and of themselves that has a particular perspective on your product or That's right. on something, right? That's right. Does that make sense? Yeah, that so does make sense. If one is that they're just not this thing, and the other is that they're their own thing. Mm -hmm. And that matters. How you think about that other matters. That's right. Because that identity, that other as an identity has agency. And that agency could affect the process of whatever you're trying to figure out. Well, what's interesting to me is um, two things. One is in the study of the 35,000 people, mm -hmm. we, are, we are actually the most, at only 50%, we're the best at making identities at yeah. distinctions. Yeah. Right. So we are actually, uh, of the four, D, S, R, and P, we're the, we're the, we most frequently will actually engage with distinctions. We'll with the distinctions. identity part of distinctions. With the identity yes. part, with that caveat. Yes. And also we did another study, which was another you know 1,100 people, where we actually found that we're actually overconfident yes. in our thinking skills, generally. The Dunning-Kruger effect. But specifically also pretty overconfident in our ability to make distinctions. Yes. So right. we think we're better at them than we are. So then the question is... Um, shifting from the existence of the pattern to the efficacy of of being aware of the pattern. Yeah, the only other prediction that I, that we should not oh, yeah, that we should mention is that, and th this one gets a little little complex. But in order to make identity other distinctions, you you must utilize part whole systems, action, reaction, relationships, and point view perspectives. Meaning there are interdependencies between the D pattern and the other patterns, the S, R, and P. Okay. And, and so the research, uh, there's about 27 different studies that showed these interdependencies. Mm -hmm. And that's pretty important. So when you say we can't make a distinction without, for example, part whole systems. Yeah. One of the things we'll, we do is we understand what something is by thinking about what's part of it, right? Mm -hmm. And what's not part of it. Yes. So that's how S can play into distinction making. Yes. And the fact that, that in order for a distinction to exist at the very minimal, you have two parts, an identity and another. Yes. So by definition, it is a part whole system to make a distinction. Yes. And, the, it, it, and you must relate that identity to the other and the other to the identity. There's a relationship, an Between implicit, them. yes. Yeah. So by yeah. definition, you are relating something. And obviously there's a perspective. And there's a perspective because you're highlighting the identity and low lighting the other. Right. And so you must right. be taking a perspective. And that's just to be like, you know, blue coffee cup. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right? Just yeah. to say, Blue coffee cup. Right. Not to mention all the other complex distinctions that we're making, but something as simple as yeah. I see a blue coffee cup. Well, and, and and another powerful example is the whole idea of us, them. Yes. Right. So to us, me, them is identity, other right. uh, structure. So to us, there's a them, but them is also an us that sees a them. So That's you've right. got this, you know, 
I, you know, I'm the identity, you're the other. But to you, you're the identity and I'm the other because of your perspective. Yeah. And again, across the disciplines, you're going to see this identity other structure. So you have us yeah. and them. You have figure ground in mm -hmm. Gestalt theory. You have noise and signal, noise and signal yep. right? Or signal and noise, signal you, noise. You know, throughout across the disciplines, you're going to see these repeating big ideas that reflect identity other structure. Yeah. Not to mention all of what we're talking about is related to actually forming one's own identity. So it has tremendous yes. psychosocial implications about how do we have identity formation as humans. Right. Right. How do we differentiate our company or our product from others? Or ourselves. How do we differentiate ourselves from our siblings? Yeah. <laughs> you know, all these kinds of things, all these identity forming um, mechanisms yeah. are all identity other interactions. And so we're seeing that across a wide swath of things, whether you're talking about, you know, quantum physics or physics or chemistry or biology or psychology or sociology, right. all the way up the, up the ladder of disciplines. Yeah, and the fact that they're universal across all of those yeah. things and across all humans. Then we wanted to think about in our research, what is the value of being aware of identity other distinctions? Yes. And we set out to to test that, yep. to see the evidence for that. Yeah, so we knew, for example, we know from meta-analyses, which is kind of the gold standard of scientific research, um, which is a bunch of a bunch of uh, uh, researches coming together and yeah. doing a meta-analysis across all of them. It's the research of the research. Yeah, research it's of the meta. research. Yeah, it's very meta. So we know, for example, from meta-analyses of metacognition, which is super meta, <laughs> right? Double meta. Metacognition just means thinking about thinking or awareness of one's thinking. Yeah. Um, that just increasing metacognition at a, in a very general sense, like ju if I just get you to be more attentive to what you're thinking about without even teaching you any kind of specific metacognitive skills, right. just the bringing awareness to your thinking can have massively important effects, right? In lots of domains. In lots of domains, yeah. personal, professional, et cetera. So we know... At a very general level, increasing metacognition increases effectiveness across all domains. Yes. Right? Now we take that to a much more tactical, technical, practical level. Right. The one, you know, this is kind of hundred thousand foot level metacognition. Now we zoom into one thousand foot level, yeah. where the rubber meets the road metacognition, yeah. which is things like <laughs> distinctions, identity, other. So what we wanted to see is. Does being aware of the structure of one's thinking, not just bringing awareness to one's thinking, but but having tactical, technical awareness of these structures, these DSRP structures, mm -hmm. does that increase your ability to think more complexly, yeah. to solve problems, et cetera, yeah. those kinds of things? So we did, we've done no, numerous studies in that world. Yes, and if you remember, uh, when we designed those studies, we were very careful to test only one pattern at a time. Yes, to show to that, isolate the pattern. To isolate yeah. the pattern. So, in terms of distinctions, yes. the research, you know, we had a sample of I want to say thousand people in the fish tank study. Yeah, I think twelve hundred people or yeah. something like that. And the basic idea was. We were, we were testing whether or not awareness of just one pattern would increase, like you said, the robustness or the complexity yes. of one's thinking about something. Yep. So we showed participants Show a, fish a, fish, tank. a fish tank. Picture image. of a fish tank. Yeah. Again, we're just, we're just getting them to describe a scene. Mm -hmm. So in the pre-treatment, uh, we have them just describe what they see. Which means before they learn. Before they learn the, before they get, they learn the, the distinction, identity, other right. pattern. We ask them to describe the scene. Then they get a, uh, in this particular study, they got text. 
yeah. that described some of the aspects of distinction identity the of basics, it, kind of yeah. the basics of it. And all we did this for all four patterns, and none of those texts took more than a minute a minute to read. So yeah. it, we're talking about a minute of somewhere between thirty seconds and one minute of reading mm -hmm. is the treatment. Yeah, about distinction identity other. That's right. as a structure, and then they're asked to describe the uh, fish tank. And they write. They wrote their answers. Yes, they wrote their answers. And. We were able to statistically analyze yeah. the complexity of the language they used before and after learning the pattern yeah. and analyze it in yeah. terms of cognitive complexity based on a lot of the research in language as, yes. a, as a proxy. Uh, and, what, and what we found was pre and post. Highly statistically yeah. significant increases in, in cognitive complexity. So their ability to make more refined, more detailed distinctions increased just from a minute from less than a minute of reading that's cool and we saw it across all four patterns ds and r and d well, but yeah we, but time. but i we definitely <laughs> we saw it in dio uh pretty significantly right so then there so for distinctions we found in that in that case the increase in cognitive complex but you also mentioned increases in problem solving Yes. And so we did, a, that's our more recent research. Yeah, so at some point, um, what we saw was people were not practiced in the, in the art of distinction making with identity and other. Yes. And we saw that if we could move people from simply recognizing the I Mm -hmm. to recognizing the O and using that recognition of both of these variables to challenge the I. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. That we could actually cr have an effect possibly on um, problem solving mm -hmm. in more complex scenarios. Yes. So the fish tank example, you know, it's it's a complex scene but you're not really asking. You're just asking the person to describe what they see, and they describe it with increasing complexity and detail. They see more after the treatment. They yeah. see more essentially. But what we wanted to do is test if we taught them a cognitive move yes. that was the process of being better at making distinctions, mm -hmm. being more aware, and also having the technical know-how of making a better distinction. Yes. If we taught them that cognitive move, that mental move, would they be able to solve a complex problem better? Right. Like a policy issue or you know, some, some uh, yeah. community issue or something that, that, that people were having. Mm -hmm. And so, again, we had a similar setup, which is we had people... Uh, um, Solve read, a the, the, read a problem and solve it. Describe how they would solve this. Describe how problem. they would think it through. Yeah. And then we showed them a one minute video. Yeah. Teaching them the move, yeah. which we can show, which is the is is not list, the DIO list. Yep. Yeah. And then ask them to describe how their thinking had changed. Yep. Yeah. Uh, when having learned that move. That's right. Then we analyzed all of that text quantitatively and qualitatively. That's right. And we had people look at which ones were more mm -hmm. complex. We analyzed it according to uh, different algorithms and things like that and found a, in the case of uh, DIO, yeah. th that was a, actually the highest of the five moves that are a Pareto law for cognition. Um DIO was the high received the highest, and it was something on the order of five point five one. It was five point five one increase. X. Yeah. So over five hundred percent increase in their ability to solve complex problem. Yes. From a one minute intervention. Right. Of of, of the mental move. So this is not. This is. A little different than the pattern. The pattern is distinctions, identity, other. Yeah. The move is called is, is not list or DIO list. Mm -hmm. Same thing, different names. Yeah. 
And that move, I can show the move if that's helpful. I think we should. Yeah. We should do a couple examples. So that move, you could do it with cards like we do here. And it basically just has the structure of you have an is and you make an is list and an is not list. That's why they call it is is not list or identity DIO list, distinction identity other list. Mm -hmm. Basically what you're doing is you're making a structure that's like this. So here's the distinction. The distinction is between what, you know, X is mm -hmm. and X is not. Right. Right. And all you're doing is making a list of X is not this, X is not this, X is not this, X is this, X is this, X is this. So for example, a great example would be what is fruit? Mm-hmm. Now, you could say fruit is oranges, apples, blah, blah, blah. But what we really want to get at with is, is not list is what is what fundamentally distinguishes fruit from not fruit. Yeah. And if you do this long enough or you have enough un understanding of fruit, what you'll what you really actually come down to is it has seeds. Yeah. Right. If something has seeds, it's a fruit. Yeah. And if it's vegetative then it's not a fruit. Yeah, and it seems right? to me, Derek, yeah. that what would be interesting is what that means is you don't have to have the same number. No. Like, you, this could yeah. be one could critical be, distinction. Exactly. And there could be more qualities of not fruit. Right. And only one thing that distinguish fruit. Right. Distinguish fruit. And I think it's also important to point out that this move is is getting you to see, literally see the other. Yes. That's why it's an important That's why it's important. Because you're literally, it's on the table, you're seeing the other. We know we tend not to see the other. So this move is designed to get you to see both parts. And the other co-defines the identity. Mm -hmm. So the identity makes more sense when it's compared and contrasted to the other. Yes. And for example, if you're trying to get your team on the same page, being able to see what the project is and what the project is not yep. is going to get them more on the same page than just saying what the project is. That's right. Right? Because they're going to have this like real contrasty example where the distinction, see, the distinction is here. The identity is here. The other is here. Mm -hmm. But the distinction that you're after That's is right. actually the difference. Yeah. Right? And so is, is not list move is is not list so we write it like that or dio list is another term we use this move learning this move is going to dramatically increase your abilities to make detailed specific mm -hmm. distinctions to get shared understanding of those distinctions to clarify distinctions in arguments and miscommunications yeah. and communications. So yeah. you're going to be able to yeah. say, but wait a minute, when you say blah, 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 what do you mean by that? Because because yeah. I'm maybe hearing something different. Yeah, I mean, how I many times do I say, oh, I thought you meant this. Yeah, exactly. And you're like, no, I meant this. And so this is going to help you with communication. Yes. Interpersonal conflict, intrapersonal conflict. What do I think about something that I'm confused about? Uh, it's going to help you get your team on the same page. Mm -hmm. It's an absolutely critical cognitive skill. And if you practice this move, and I really mean practice it because you have to practice it to get good at it. Mm -hmm. What you're doing is you're burning the neural pathways so that your brain just naturally does this all the time. And that, in that way, once you start practicing it, you're going to just be faster. You're going to get to the critical distinctions much, much faster because your brain's going to know how to do it. Right. But I would correct that a little bit, which yeah. doesn't happen often, which is it's not just that you're faster. You're faster at seeing both. Yes. Right. Because we're fast at making identities. We're we really know fast that. at doing this. But this makes you fast at seeing both of them in that moment, knowing this is the distinction I'm making. Yes but make it intuitive and it's more robust because it's the I and the O, yep. not just the I. Because we know we're going to do I all the time. And you'll be able to, with a little bit of practice, you'll be able to do both as fast as somebody that's just doing the one. That's right. And, and that's important because you're going to immediately see the error 
that nobody sees mm -hmm. before you wait two weeks to find out the error. Exactly. Right? Or you wait a million dollars later, yeah. you find out the error. That's happened. Uh, it happens all the time, yeah. right? But you're going to see that error happening right up front. Hey, guys, we're, we're, you know, we're not seeing this whole other thing over mm -hmm. here that actually needs to move over and be a part of the, a part yes. of the identity. Because yes. sometimes you, you, in this process, you, you put something over here and you go, I don't know, like, that's kind of, yeah, that's kind of part of this thing. And you change the definition of the identity as a result of being forced to do the identity and the other. Well, I think that this is the first step to actually building a shared mental model. It's Getting the distinctions clear, making sure that everyone's on the same page, yeah. li literally means having the same mental model before you execute on it. Yeah, it's, it's so costly. Forward. Like yeah. this is one of the most costly things. Yeah. And there's a... There's a thing in science called chaos theory, which just means sensitive dependence on initial conditions. Mm -hmm. And I know that's kind of a, a maybe a little too nerdy to, to bring into you. the conversation. <laughs> but, but in a sense, all of our cognition is sensitively dependent on the initial identities that we lay yes. down. Right. So, you know, in a meeting we go, oh, what do we all think of this? And. Joe says blah, and Frank says blah, and Sally says blah, and all of a sudden we're down the road on blah, blah, and blah. Well, I think another way to put sense? it is it's the frame. It sort of becomes our destiny. Yes. And what distinction identity other does is it makes it so that doesn't have to be our de our destiny. Yeah, meaning you can correct, you, you can, can course correct, correct before you're off course. Yeah, and before it costs you a lot of money Time and money. a lot of time and a lot of frustration. So, I can't do I mean, you know, we've had so many executives tell us, wow, we would have totally done this and not found out about it until six months from now. Yeah. Right? We would have just gone with these assumptions, which were completely wrong. We weren't all thinking the same thing. And we wouldn't have known that we weren't thinking the same thing until six months from now, after we had spent the money and the time on the project that we're not even on the same page on. Yeah. Well, and I, you know, of course, look at all the dysfunctional communication and the fighting and, and you know, yeah. uh, in the world, which almost entirely has to do with you're using a term differently than I'm hearing a term. Right. And you mean something completely different. And I don't check because I assume that my identity is your identity. Yeah, we do that all the time. No, well, we not don't. you and me, but, I mean, <laughs> but people. We 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 catch those things. Yeah, yeah. So which I guess leads to much much less conflict. Yeah. So I guess there are two things as we sort of wrap wrap up a little bit. Is I would say, like, for me, I challenged myself. You know, after listening to this, go outside and see what you can make an is is not list out of, yeah. right? Just see it everywhere, practice it everywhere. Yep. And like you said, it'll become faster. And it's not just that it'll become faster, it's more complete. Yep. And it ties into what you said about the whole system one, system two thinking. Yes. Remember when, uh, how did you say Yeah, Kahneman's work on system one, system two. System one is autonomic, it's really fast. You don't have to do anything to get it. And it only has one tiny little downside, which is wrong a lot. Yeah. Right? It's, a big <laughs> it's kind of a big downside. <laughs> system two thinking, you, it takes, it's, the downside is it's slower. It, it has, you know, increases in its accuracy, but it's much slower. Well, we live in fast paced environments. Mm -hmm. So we need to be right and fast. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Slow and, and mostly accurate or fast and wrong. Those aren't good Those choices. are bad choices. <laughs> we need to be fast and right. And the only way to do that is practicing and burning the neurons of these yes. structures, of the DIO structure and four more moves that we've discovered in our research. That I, Those we'll are next. Do, we'll yeah. do other ones there. But if you practice these, and I mean really practice them, practice them with cards. The, the, the um, DSRP cards are a great, a great tool, but you don't need cards. You can do it, you know, in your notebook. You can write is, is not, make a list, blah, 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 right? You can mm -hmm. do it in your notebook with pen and paper. You can do it with 
post-it notes yeah, on a board, board, right? Oh, so oh, these are all accordion. <laughs> you know, put is is not. Now oh, these are all mm -hmm. right, and then you can make little ones if you want. Yeah, I like that. You can do it with post-it notes. Mm -hmm. You can do it with sugar packets. Ah, your favorite. Right? If you're sitting at a diner and you're trying to describe something to somebody, you know, at a at a you know lunch or something like that. You can do it with sugar packets mm -hmm. and and say, well, you know, are we are we saying that this is this thing in or out? Yeah. Is where does it, it fit? Where does it fit? Yeah. Right. And then eventually, you'll just do it naturally in your head yeah. with or without these without tactile effort. yeah. efforts. But you have to practice it. What we've learned in twenty five years of research is that. You can't just learn these things conceptually and then expect that when you're in the thick of it, when you're in the shit, when you're in the, yeah, in the moment. stressful situation, that you're going to think this way. Because you're only going to think this way if you practice thinking this way. Yes. So put it on your mirror. I, I have a, you know, as you know, a dry erase next <laughs> to my toothbrush and I yeah. put things on the mirror. So you're practice right. it. Practice it when you're in the car. Practice it when you're in the shower. Practice it with everyday things, stupid stuff like you know what is and is not a plant. What is and is not a, you know why why do we why do we call this a glass and this is a mug? That's you know when guess. when what do I have to do to this thing before it becomes a mug? Put a handle on it. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. Like that's maybe that's what it is. Uh, so if it if it was like a really tall, slender glass mm -hmm. and I put a handle on it, do you think people would call it a mug? Mm, maybe. Interesting, Unless right? it was made of something that got hot when you put hot. If it was yeah. like crystal glass with oh, a yeah. tiny little handle. No, probably not. No, people probably wouldn't call that a mug, right? That's right. So that's really interesting. Now I'm thinking about like, it. Yeah, like what, how is it that we so clearly, because we've been around them, you know, we know a mug when we see a mug. But what do we actually mean by a mug? It's it's probably short, short. It's got a handle, it's squat, and it's, it's made out of some kind of more insular stuff, right? Yeah, that's right. And we're making these distinctions all the time without really knowing what goes into them. And yeah. is is not move, kind of elucidates. Oh, it peels yeah. back the curtain on our distinctions, distinctions that we're making. It lets us to see. The, how the sausage is being made. Yeah. Right? That's right. It lets us see the behind the curtain. Yes. It's very powerful. Yes. So we're coming to a close. Oh, we are. And I know it flies by when you're talking about fun stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I think there are a couple of things that I would sort of take away from this. Mm -hmm. One is remember that you're, you tend to see the identity. So mm -hmm. look for the other. Two is challenge the distinctions that you're making. And I think most importantly, it's you can get better at them, but with only through practice. Only through practice. Right? That yeah. you need to practice, practice, practice. And yeah. then it's all going to come into place. Yeah. And, and it doesn't take long. Like If you yeah. start practicing this move, mm -hmm. within a day, you're going to start seeing yourself think differently. Yeah. Within a week, people around you are going to perceive you differently. And within two weeks, you're just going to be darn good at it. Yeah. And and you're gonna you're gonna think to yourself, how did I like make yeah. it? However old I am, how did I make yeah. it through life without being aware of this? This is crazy. Like it's all around me. Everybody's doing it. And nobody knows about it. <laughs> you know, I got to tell everybody yeah, about yeah, this yeah. thing because they're doing it all the time, and you it'll just. It'll just be so clear to you that it's happening all the time, everywhere you go. You know, there's this identity bias happening. Mm -hmm. Nobody's looking at the other. Yeah. And it's causing, it's wreaking havoc on like all kinds of teamwork, all kinds of marriages, all kinds of, you know, Everything. problems yeah. are coming out of this very simple structure that is very easy to learn and practice. Yeah. And it will transform your thinking. For sure. In a lot of ways. And it's that starting point to your thinking. That's the other part that's so influential about DE is it's it's that starting point. And yeah. so later we'll teach you about perspective and part whole and, and relationship, action, reaction, and all these other patterns, these other three patterns. Mm -hmm. and, the, and the four moves that are so important to this move that we just showed you. But 
this move kind of starts it all off. And yeah, uh, I, I think that what you said about the sensitive dependence on initial conditions. Yeah. It it can't be. Um, I don't know, overstate it. It can't. No, it, I mean, it's really, really critical. I would say eight, seven or eight times out of ten when we're talking to people and they say, oh, my God, if I had just thought differently at the beginning, at the beginning. everything else would have been different, yeah. whether it's a professional situation, a personal situation. If I just thought about what was the distinction I was making and yep. and communicated it and built a shared distinction, it would have been completely different. Yeah, outcomes. Plato said, well begun is half done. And, you know, that really applies here. If we can check our distinctions, especially the ones that are influencing the beginning of our thinking, yeah. because we kind of get locked in mm -hmm. and then you're never going to think this thought that's over here. Right. It's a foot and a half away, this thought, but you're never going to think it because you're never even going to look there because you got you got kind of pigeonholed or locked into this one route at the very beginning because you didn't challenge your distinctions. That's right. And that's how echo chambers form. And that's how, yeah. you know, bias forms and all kinds of super costly stuff, personally costly and professionally costly. Well, and invisible stuff. And invisible. That we need to make visible. Yeah. And that's how we do it. This is how we do it. All right. This is how we do it. Mm -hmm. Oh, we should oh, never God, get me and you singing. We can't sing on YouTube, can we? No, can't you spoof it? Didn't we just spoof that? Isn't that allowed? Direct replica of the song. Yeah, but I sang it. So it's an original. It's like a cover. Is that a rap? Did we do DIO is is not list? I think we've done we've done it. That's the move. We've done the it. The move that matters. And hopefully that has been useful. Yeah, that's just one of five moves that we found are an 80-20 rule. Yes. Which means that you put in 20% of the effort, you get 80% of the results in cognition. Yes. That's one of five moves that are part of that 80-20 rule. So, yeah. you, you know, learn these other four. Yeah. And you're going to start to see that they interact with each other. And then they're just really powerful and they have a huge effect on people. All right. That's a wrap. That's a wrap.